that's one, one area where we need to invest a lot. And then the other sector is in the areas of um, <clears throat> human resources for health, whereby we need to facilitate the health workers in terms of how, how are they facilitated in terms of doing their work and being at the front line, those who are in hard to reach areas, these are the people that we need uh, to make sure that they are, they are facilitated. And of course access to, to, to uh, what I call the essential medicines and uh, among others, those can be the first priorities that we can look at uh, at the moment and, and in this era where we are trying to fight the, the, the COVID, what I can call the COVID era. Often time, uh, different budget allocations to different sectors, including health. Uh, a lot of money has been spent on luxurious spending, yes. workshops, travels, uh, name them. How best do we, given even the money which we are saying is not enough, yes. but how best do we utilize efficiently the little allocation that we have achieve something in the critical areas we've talked about? Yeah, what we need to do, the, 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 the sector needs to reduce on what you've said, it's luxury expenditure. And uh, when you look at the, the, the period we are in, we may not need to have these um, things like travel, the ministers or those technocrats, they, they are no longer travels. Where are you traveling? So the budget that is allocated to travels this is something that can be allocated to a, a certain sector. S seminars, workshops, and this will trickle down to the per diems that these officials get in terms of uh, their travels and these workshops. So this, this budget uh, which is allocated to those sections can be channeled to critical areas. As I told you, we lack blood in the country. It's where the country can invest more to make sure that people can access blood in whatever units uh, or hospitals they are. And so those are some of the luxury expenditures that they, they, they can cut on. Uh, issues in terms of, um, uh, in terms of uh, vehicles, in terms of transport, you find that the ministry has a large chunk of vehicles and yet I know that the president has been agitating for the four-wheel drives uh, which 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 he, which you are saying that they will facilitate, but some of these, you look at most of the health stations at the districts, they are those cars that have been under mechanical conditions, they can't repair them, but we need more cars. Again, the same thing will happen if we could invest more monies in the areas that I had talked about, that would be critical. And if the sector alone could reduce on that luxury spending, it would help in terms of reallocating that money to different sectors. Now, uh, from a personal point of view, yes. let's uh, look a little bit at uh, the Abuja Declaration. 15% yes. of the national budget allocated to the health sector. Do you think, do you believe that one day we will get there as a country? Yes, we need to have hope, but it needs a lot of political will uh, because uh, the, the budget process, does, you see how uh, the, 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 the legislature, normally, depending on who is taking on the wheel, but if there is a political will, I think it can be, uh, it can be achieved. Uh, if our priorities are set right, We've done a lot the past years, we've put money into infrastructure, we've put money into security, we've put money into interest payment. If we reduce on the loans and also make sure that we equitably distribute these, the, the, the percentage within our financial budget, we can reach there. We may not reach there now, but at least let's see an increase from 6 percent to 7 percent to 8, 10 and eventually 15, but the most critical point is uh, political will in terms of, because money is there, but how even the money that we have in most of the sectors, you find that that money is lost through corruption, uh, most through procurement processes which are scandalous, into dubious deals within uh, different sectors, and if that money is brought back and be 
translated into a big percentage if you add it on the six point, let me say one percent, which uh, has been allocated to the health sector. Finally, yes. Sehad, we've moved a long way. Yes. From when we started, we've achieved a lot. We've seen uh, many hurdles along the way. Where do we go from here? Uh, from here, as, uh, as an institution, we are, we are building uh, a, a critical mass of, uh, we, are, our, we are trying to, we are making sure that we build a critical mass of advocates within the health sector. We, want, we don't want to move uh, different civil societies to move in silos. We want to move together in terms of advocacy. When we have a strong voice, whatever issues we advocate for, we can realize these issues. So that's one, one area we are looking at. We have one strong voice uh, to make sure that um, we, we go as a team and we advocate as a team, not to advocate uh, in different uh, sectors. Yet we are one. What we are looking at, the outcome, is uh, ultimately for the communities and the vulnerables to access uh, the best of the health services uh, within the country. Yeah. Th thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've been talking to Christopher Baguma, and he comes from uh, Sehad. This is the uh, Center for Health human rights and development, a national level NGO dealing in a lot of issues but mainly around the right to health, uh, social justice and uh, development. And we've been talking about the health sector budget which we all agree that it might not be enough but most importantly even the little funds allocated to this sector we must utilize it better to align with the national health priorities. Cliff Abinit is my name. And this is Lot 24. Smart business.